Hello and welcome to NGen Math 6 by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 1, Lesson 1, Whole Number Multiplication. The first lesson of the year. And it's a short one, but we're going to be reviewing one of the most important things in all of math, and that's multiplying whole numbers. Not just reviewing your times tables, but also reviewing what multiplication means and how it's connected to the area of a rectangle. So let's get right into the first exercise where we try to get at the meaning of multiplication. All right, everybody ready? Let's take a look at exercise number one. Ian is saving $5 per day to go to the fair. He saves for a total of seven days. Letter A asks us to fill in the diagram to model Ian's savings. Write an expression using addition that shows the total amount that Ian saves. All right, so this is simple enough. All I want to do is use my weekly calendar right here to visualize how much Ian totally saves, right? And he's going to save $5 on Sunday, $5 on Monday, etc. Right? And so, at the end of the week, in terms of addition, Ian will have saved 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. All right. Now, I'm not saying that we need to evaluate this right now. We're going to do that in part B. But a long time ago, people figured out that there are many situations where we want to add the same number again and again and again, right? In this case, we want to add five, sorry, seven fives up. So in letter B, when it says show and evaluate a product for the total amount that Ian saves, well, that's where we bring multiplication in, right? A product is simply a multiplication problem, and that problem for us would be seven times five, which hopefully you know is 35. So Ian saves up $35. Now, I really want to drive home a very important point about multiplication. In almost every situation where multiplication gets applied in the real world, essentially what you have are two things in the product. You have sort of how many buckets there are, in this case there are seven of them, and then how many things are in the bucket, and in this case, five dollars in each one of them. So you're always having groups that have the same amount of stuff in them. In this case, those groups are days, there's seven of them, and what's inside of them are dollars, and there's five in each one of them. So never forget that. All we're doing with multiplication is counting up how much stuff we have, dollars, people, square inches, what have you, by counting up how many things we have and how much stuff is in each group. And then we multiply to get our final answer. Now, of course, in order to do this multiplication, we need to feel comfortable with our times tables. So let's do a little bit of review in the next exercise on some basic products that you'll want to have memorized. Here we go. Exercise number two. Evaluate each of the following products. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit before we kind of jump in. It is really important that you know your times tables from one up to 10, maybe even 11 and 12 is important, but certainly one to 10, all right? Because if not, then you're gonna be looking at a problem like this, three times six, which literally means six plus six plus six, and you're gonna to have to do that in the long way. You're gonna to have to say, well, six plus six is uh, 12, and then you're gonna to have to say, well, 12 plus six is um, 18, and that becomes a real headache, especially when you should just know immediately that three times six is 18, all right? So what I want you to do right now is I want you to pause the video, and then I want you to try to see how many of these you know and can get correct. If you absolutely don't know it, then maybe do it the old-fashioned way by adding up the, the numbers that you have, but you should know all of these. So pause the video now. Take a few moments to do that. All right, let's come right back to it. So I'm just going to kind of go through these. 5 times 11, 11s are great. That's 55. 
Then we have 8 times 7, which is 56. 9 times 4, which is 36. We've got 7 times 7, which is 49. 6 times 8, which is 48. 3 times 9, which is 27. 8 times 0, which is 0. I'd like to pause just for a minute and talk about that one, letter H. Any time 0 is involved in a product, it doesn't matter which of the two numbers it is, the end result will be 0. We can think of this one as literally if we had 8 buckets and nothing in each bucket, how much would we have? We would have 0. Likewise, if the 0 was first, if I had something like 0 times 10, that would be like having no buckets where each one of them holds 10 things. Well, I still have nothing because I have no buckets holding anything, right? So at the end of the day, something called the zero product law, any time zero is involved in a product, the result is zero. We like zero involved in a product. Let's finish them off. 10 times 10, that's a very important one, 100. 8 times 5, 40. 4 times 6, 24 and 9 times 8, 72. Look, there's a lot more of them that you have to know. In fact, at the end of the day, you should know, you know everything from 1 times 1 up to 10 times 10 at the bare minimum. And again, 11's thrown in because they're pretty easy given that you know, 7 times 11 is 77, 9 times 11 is 99, etc. All right, we're going to be doing multi-digit multiplication in a future lesson. But for right now, we're mostly concerned with single digit. Let's move on. All right. One of the last things that we want to do in this lesson is take a look at the connection between the area inside of a rectangle and multiplication. So let's take a look at exercise number three. The rectangle shown below has a length of four inches and a width of three inches. Points have been placed at one inch intervals along each side. Letter A, the image shown below, is called a square inch. A square where each side is one inch long. All right, and let's talk about this a little bit, right? When we measure area and when we measure volume, all right, we're thinking about how many of a given object fit within another one. Now for area, almost always that's how many squares of a given size fit inside of something else. A square inch, as mentioned, is going to be a square where all four sides are an inch long. And what we want to figure out is how many of these go into here. And that's the first question. How many of these square inches will fit inside of the rectangle, draw on the picture to justify? So you're going to want to do this with a ruler, or you could do it freehand. Probably wouldn't hurt to do it freehand. I'm going to use a straight line tool that we've got on the smart board. So let's do that. Let's figure out how many are going to fit in here. All right, real simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect each one of these points with the one on the opposite side of the rectangle. And it's easy enough now to just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? So the area of this rectangle is 12. Well, that's not what we want. Let's go back to our Ben. Is 12 square centimeters. All right, there's 12 of them. But there's an easier way of finding area than having to like draw this grid on and then count how many of these kind of fit in there. And it's definitely a formula that you've seen before. So think about this for a moment. In letter B, how can we find the area of a rectangle without drawing all of the unit squares that fall inside of it? Take a moment, pause the video if you need to, and see if you can remember how to figure that out simply by the length and the width of the rectangle. Take a moment. All right. Let's talk about it. Hopefully, what you realized was that that 12 square centimeters came from the fact that we had four square inches that went across the top, and then we had three rows of those four square inches. And so at the end of the day, we can always find the area of the rectangle by simply taking its length 
and multiplying by its width. Or if you like, its width multiplied by its length. Let's write down that formula really quick. Right? The area of a rectangle is simply its width times its length. All right? And again, it really gets to the heart of multiplication. You could kind of think of the width maybe as being how many buckets you have, and then the length being how many square inches are in each bucket, or vice versa. It really doesn't matter, right? But you're really just counting how many squares fall in a row, and then how many rows you have. So let's get just a little bit of practice on this in our last exercise of the day. All right, exercise number four. For each rectangle below, find its area, and give the proper units of the area. All right, let's do problem A together and then you can do problems B and C on your own and then we'll give you the answers. In letter A, we've got a rectangle that is five centimeters by eight centimeters. So the area formula is very, very simple. The area is simply going to be five centimeters times eight centimeters, which is going to be 40, and here come our units, square, centimeters. Now, just as an aside, your teacher may want you to, instead of putting down 40 square centimeters, might want you to write it down this way, with a little 2 as an exponent. All right, we'll talk about exponents a lot more in this course, but this is just a shorthand way of saying a square centimeter. All right, it's just an easy way to do it. Watch out, what you would never want to do is say that the area inside of this rectangle is 40 centimeters. That literally makes no sense. A centimeter has no area, it's just a length, right? But 40 square centimeters, well that's how many of those squares that are a centimeter by a centimeter fit inside of this. All right, take a moment now, pause the video, and find the areas in B and C and give me the right units on it, okay? All right, let's do it. It's really simple. In letter B, all we're going to have is we're going to have 9 times 11, and that's going to give us 99 square feet. And again, if you like to write it a little bit shorter, you can say 99 feet with a little exponent squared. Okay. Let's now look at letter C. Sorry, it's a bit squished over here, but that's okay. In this case, we're gonna have four yards times nine yards. Four times nine is 36. And we have square yards. All right, so easy enough. The area of any rectangle can always be found by taking the product of its width and its length, or its length times its width. All right, let's wrap this lesson up. Right, so thank you for joining me for the first lesson in NGen Math 6 by eMath Instruction. Whole number multiplication, exceptionally important. We're gonna be using it immediately in the next lesson, understanding why it is, or what it is, uh, making sure you review your product or times tables, and then understanding the connection to the area of a rectangle, all important ideas that we went over today. All right, and we're gonna revisit them time and time again in future lessons. For now though, again, just wanna thank you for joining me, Kirk Weiler, for eMath instruction. Let me just say, keep thinking and keep solving problems.